Hello and welcome again, friends. This is the Unit 2 project, and the Unit 2 project is a text game. And as you can see, I had my Mad Libs game up. But this time, we're looking at a text game where the user is given the choice, and they can kind of walk through a, a scene that we have set up for them. So as you can see here, I have my floors already set up. And I also have a print statement telling the user kind of how the game is going to work. Um, so we say, welcome to our text game. You'll spawn in a series of rooms. You can choose to go left or right. If there is an object in the room, you will also be able to grab the object. And as you can see here, I'm giving the user their options in parentheses to kind of, you know, let them know what the inputs are. And I'm saying if there's an object in the room, they can grab. If there's a monster in the room, they can attack. Uh, finally, your goal is to go upstairs. You can go up the stairs using up. Good luck. Um, and another thing we need to add, you can go up the stairs. If you see stairs going up, say up. And uh, we want to add one more thing saying, if you see stairs going down, say down. Um, but basically it's just a you know very initial setup. Um, up here with the floors, what we're doing and the way that I've set my game up and the way that the uh, prompt kind of supplies this is that we want to do every single uh, list index as its own room. So here on floor one, I have five rooms. I have one room and the content of the room, there's nothing. We're just gonna say there's nothing there. In one room, there are magic stones, which is part of the project, uh, it's kind of the prompt. You need that to defeat the boss monster. Um, there's also stairs going up. There's a monster right here. Um, and then of course we have floor two where it's just another collection and we have floor three. And one thing that's important to note that I want to put in a comment right above my floors is that um, going right, so the user can choose to like go right or left. And here going left will be down an index. And then uh, going right will go up an index. And the way that I intend this to be played and the way that I want to set my project up is that the user has the ability and we're going to be tracking them using a variable. So here I'll say player room and I'm initialize it saying zero. So right now they're going to start in one of these first three rooms uh, on some of my floors, but I also want to give them an initial floor. And here I'll say player floor is equal to zero. And of course you can change this if you want your own game. Maybe you want them to start in the middle or on the top floor and go down. Um, I'm just going to have them start at the very beginning in the first room where there's nothing. Um, another way that I want to run this, and it's going to make a lot of sense later once we start setting up kind of how we access our different rooms and how we move them and how we change them, is I want to set up another variable, floor list, and it's simply going to be a collection of all my floors. So here I'll say floor one, floor two, and floor three. So the user is going to go through these. There, we are going to access those indexes using our variables, and we kind of have a floor list that'll, cat, that'll neatly organize everything that's in all three floors, right? Um, to start this, we want a uh, a game loop, and we've done a game loop in the lab that's right before uh, lesson lesson two seven, which is lesson two six. So you can kind of see how to go through that. But the basic structure is while, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take in a player input. I'm going to say while the player input is not equal to quit, I'm going to run through my code. So I'm going to print out nothing initially. Um, but we also want to make sure we initialize player input because if we just ran this like it is, it's going to go on forever. Player input's also never going to be taken in. So I'm pretty sure it should throw an error for me. So if I click start, you can see it prints out all our initial stuff. And it's performing all this code perfectly. It's storing these variables, it's creating them. Um, but then it just says player inputs not defined. So I wanna go ahead and create player input. And I'm gonna do that. I'm going to initialize my player input equal to nothing. Cause I want to go into this loop. I don't wanna give the user the option to just quit automatically. I wanna give them the option to like put something in. I just wanna go straight into the code and just tell them what's going on after I've given them the options. So player input is gonna be equal to nothing. And I also want to initialize one more thing. This is going to be game status. Um, there's going to be two scenarios uh, for the user. They can either, well, I should say three scenarios. The user can either quit. The user can um, 
uh, lose or the user can win, right? Losing is going to be if they get killed by a monster. Uh, quitting will just take them out of the game. And winning will be if they get the prize guarded by the boss monster. Um, but I just want to initialize that game status because I do intend on using it later. Um, and it'll kind of allow me to uh, tell the user if they've won or not at the very end. It's just going to be a very simple check. And so now I also want to print out a basic status. So here we're going to say you are in room and we're gonna give them a variable. And here, I'm just gonna give it nothing. We're gonna say X. And I'll come back to what we're gonna put there. Um, actually, you know, we can just do it now. So stir, um, I'm gonna turn my player room uh, into a string and that's just a variable. And I also wanna add one to it. We are using player room and player four like Python indexes. So we're starting at zero for both of them, but the user might not really know kind of how that's used in programming nomenclature. So we're going to add a one to it. We're going to tell them, even though I know that they're on room zero, we're going to start them on room one. Um, and then we're also going to tell them um, that they are on a particular floor. And that floor is going to be um, stir. And it's going to be player floor plus one. And I can just do that inside of my string concatenation. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to it. So what I want to do is go and hit enter, kind of get rid of this a little bit. Um, the second important thing, and, and this is where we're gonna use this, uh, this variable I'll show you in a second very often. Um, so here I will say print, I'll say on this, We'll say in this room, there is, and we're going to give the user the status of whatever we have up here, right? And I'm going to use that, uh, I'm going to access that like a double list or a list within a list. So here I'll say floor list, and we first want to access the floor, right? So we want to say which floor we're on using our index. So I'm going to say I'm on floor one, floor two, or floor three using my player floor index. And I also want to say which index I'm using within that floor, which I'm going to use player room for. So here, the simple syntax is player floor. And then I'm also going to say player room. So it'll tell them exactly what's in. It's going to go into my first list, and then it's going to go into the second list within that. And that should be pretty much it. So um, if I click run right now, you can see it's going to repeat forever. So I'm going to go ahead and stop my code execution. There's nothing from keeping it from just going because player input's never taken, right? It just wants to loop through this continuously. So I'm going to go ahead and clear. And um, I am going to say player input is equal to uh, input. I'm going to say, what would you like to do? And just like that, um, if I save and I click run, you can see, we'll go ahead and scoot it. Um, we give our text introduction. We say, you're in room what? Uh, in this room, there is nothing. What would we like to do? I'll go ahead and shorten that. Uh, and we're taking user input. So if I say, for example, uh, fight, or I think my options attack, I'd enter, it does nothing. Of course, the player input loop uh, does nothing right now. It's just a very simple loop. It's telling us what we're on. Um, and that is how we go about the very basic setup of our project. All right, so we've got our setup for our unit two project. Uh, just one thing I wanna say real quick is there's a lot of different ways that you could do this. Uh, as you see, I kind of do this um, list of lists. If you maybe are not familiar with that, there are ways to do this project without kind of using that um, format. And again, uh, one thing is that I have these two inputs down here, the player input and the game status. I'm going to change the game status later on. Um, when I built this project, I found it kind of useful and you'll see how I use it. But um, there's lots of ways you don't have to use a game status or you might want to say your game status is what you're going to check for your while input. Um, I simply did it this way. It also gives the user the option to quit if they want. Um, but again, there's a lot of different ways to do this. So as we continue, the next thing that we want to do, um, I think the most simple way to put this is that we are going to 
set up the if statements. So this is where we actually want to decide what we're going to do based on user input. So here I'm going to say if player input is equal and the first option I have is left. So the user can go left or right, they can attack, um, they can do all these options that we have here in parentheses and I'm going to start checking for what the user is going to do. So I'm going to say if the user input is left, um, I want to normally, what I would say here is like player room minus equals one, right? And that's going to change my player room, which is going to change what is in each room, right? So this player room is what gets checked. <clears throat> but uh, we also need to do a little bit of if statement checking, right? Because if the user starts in the very first room, they can't go left. They can't go down anymore in this uh, list. So I'm going to say if, and I'm going to say um, player room is uh, less than one, then I want to print out that you cannot move any further, you cannot move, I'll say uh, something more descriptive. You are in the left most room already. And it's simply gonna pass over. I'll say however else, so in every other scenario where the user is not um, in a room that is less than one, so pretty much zero, we're going to um, change the room so I'll take this, I'll move it back to where we want it. And then the next statement is going to be, um, we, we kind of want to check what's in that room. And there's a lot that we can do here. So normally I'll say player room is equal to one, but I actually want another if statement. Um, if you've read the prompt for this project, you'll know that if the user tries to move past a monster or the boss monster and they don't have the proper materials, they would lose the game. So here I'm going to say if, and I'm going to use the same set of code that I used before. And one recommendation I do have for your project that I'm not going to do right here is that you could use this uh, as a variable instead of checking the uh, floor list every single time, but it's just kind of the way that I'm choosing to do it. So I'm going to say here if the uh, contents of the room is a monster or if the contents of the room and remember, we need double equals. That's why I'm getting my red lines down here. Is a boss monster. What are we going to do? Well, here I want to print out that the user has lost. Um, and we'll say you attempted to, we'll say, run past the monster that was in the room and uh, we'll do a second line as well so I don't go over the 80 characters and have too much on the screen and the second line is going to say the boss monster caught you and you have lost the game and we'll change boss monster of course just a monster um, now, the way that the game is set up and the rules, the logic that we're given specifically in the prompt is that we have to actually try attacking the monster in order to defeat it. Um, we can't just move past it. If we move past it, even if we have the materials, we're going to consider it a loss. If that's different for your class, obviously, just feel free to change this. I would just add maybe an extra thing to this if statement saying, hey, if you move past it and you have a sword, then you can defeat it. But for this, I'm going to just say, um, you know, no matter what, if you try to move past it, you get defeated. So we have a rather complicated if statement for our first input, right? We are checking if the user is um, not in a particular room. That way we can actually say, hey, you know what? You can't move any further. And if they're not, in all other cases, we are going to move the player room is plus minus one. Um, and we're going to actually have another else statement to do that. Because of course, if the user tries to move past a monster, they're going to get defeated. And what I want to do in order to exit the game properly after that happens is set the uh, game status is equal to lost. And I'm also going to automatically put player input as quit so that my main game loop will expire. 
Now, of course, you don't have to do it like this. If you just were tracking your game status as that main loop, it'll exit after you've put game status as like lost or game over or whatever. And then maybe you can check the win status as a separate condition. But this is just kind of how I'm choosing to do it. So as I'm looking at my notes and the prompt itself, and I'm just thinking about the status of the game, I think my player input for left is complete because we're checking the user to make sure they're not too far in, you know, they, that they actually can move left. We're checking to see if the user is going past a monster. And we're then saying if all else fails, if everything is good, we're hitting this else statement down here and the player is going to go down a room. So here I'll just add a comment. All checks good. User can move. This if statement will then exit and we can see that they will now be able to do more. So if we just wanna click run to test this, you can see it was running before. What would I like to do? The only option I have here is left. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in and what my game should tell me is that I cannot go any further left. And it tells me I'm in the leftmost room already and that's pretty much it. Obviously we have no other inputs so it's not gonna let me do anything else. I'll go ahead and quit. Just make sure I save my code as I'm always being safe. What we're going to continue doing is we're going to continue adding more options for our basic user input. So here I'm going to copy and paste what I had before. I'm also going to add this statement as an else if. So we just signify that by saying L if, and then I'll change the input I'm checking to write. So that's going to be the basic format for the rest of our conditions. And I'm actually going to add that right now to make my life easier. I'm going to add a couple of else ifs. Um, as you can see, it's giving us an error. That's because there's nothing for each of our conditions. So here I'll just print um, nothing just so it gets me no error and just so I can have a little bit of content to start with. We're also going to add the options for all the other uh, scenarios that our user can do. So here I've already added right. I'm going to add up to go up the stairs. I'm going to add down to go down the stairs. I'm going to continue printing. And let's say two more inputs. I, I have no idea how many I'm going to do. Um, I want to do grab. So I'm going to change this one to grab. I'm also going to change this one down here to attack. And I'm going to go ahead and continue. I think that's all the different options that I have. So as you can see here, we have an else if statement, right up, down, grab, attack. And then the only other statement I want to do is an else. So given that all those checks have failed, I'm going to say print and you have entered a command I don't recognize. And that'll signify the user that they've entered something that doesn't compat that isn't compatible with our program that we haven't checked for, and it'll just send them right back up to the top of the game loop. Um, right before I continue, I'm going to continue the rest of this video in a part two. That way, this doesn't get too long. But I'm going to go ahead and copy what I have right here for player input for the left, and I'm going to go ahead and delete all this. And um, here, I'm doing something very similar for the right. Um, if I go right, I want to check and make sure that my player room is not greater than three. Zero, one, two, three. I think three is correct. Let me check my notes. Yeah, because if we have zero through four index, I want to make sure that the player input is not four. If it is four, then it would say, okay, well, you don't want to go uh, too far past. I'm going to say you are in the right most room already, and it won't execute this else statement. This else statement for uh, this can be the same. Um, the if statement that's checking if there's a monster in there is totally fine. Again, if they're trying to move at all uh, past a monster, they're gonna lose. Nothing happens here besides just telling them that they lost and exiting the loop. And then we also have the player room um, as being uh, decremented, I think is the right word, or. Uh, move down one here. I want to change that to a positive. So their playroom is now going up because of course we've defined right is moving up in indexes through our floors. So that is the basic setup of our game loop. I think we have the majority of what we need. Uh, please tune into the next part. I'm going to show you um, the setting up of the rest of my inputs and I'll also show you how we want to end our game and we'll hopefully be able to go through a demo in that video and finish up our project. Thank you all very much.